Hello and welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi and we're here today to talk about the upcoming Explorer Anthology and Numero Trace uh, scheduled to come out on Arena July 18th. Uh, my very next video will have a similar discussion for the Historic Anthology 7. And believe it or not, for a mini anthology set with only 25 cards, there is quite a lot to talk about here. But hey, before we get into all that, I wanted to take just a moment to thank my community for helping the Stronghold reach a uh, bit of a long-term goal here. Uh, 1,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Uh, definitely a tremendous thing. Thank you for all the views, all the subs, all the likes, all the comments, and just generally being a very supportive community. It means so much more than you'll ever know. And hey, what do you do when you reach a goal? You set a new one. So moving forward, my uh, main talking point goal is going to be to reach just 50 followers over on Twitch. And frankly, we're already about halfway there, so this one should be really, really easy. If you're not already following me on Twitch, please consider doing so. And uh, that always gives you kind of a sneak peek of uh, some of the play, live play content, things like that. And uh, of course, the support continues to help the community grow. And I'll be thinking up a giveaway to do once we get there. Uh, probably not a whole account this time around, but hey, that's okay. Now, um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, right. All right, so first off, the Explorer Anthology has a total of 25 cards. And of course, if you purchase the Anthology package, you get a full play set of all 25 cards or a hundred cards in total. Uh, the and Explorer Anthology is made up of 9 Uncommons, 11 Rares, and 5 Mythics. And there's two ways to buy this package outright. Uh, either 4,000 Gems or 25,000 Gold. And uh, 25,000 Gold is 5 Quick Drafts. So if you're considering buying this Anthology outright with Gold, my best advice is don't. Because... With that being an opportunity cost of five quick drafts, you will almost certainly get better value out of five quick drafts than you will out of this or any other foreseeable anthology that may come out in the future. Now, if you do have a little more flexibility in your budget and you're considering buying this for 4,000 gems, that's a different story. Now, to get those 4,000 gems, you're talking about roughly $25 in value. Uh, of course, take notice of the fact that you can't buy exactly 4,000 gems. Um, you would basically have uh, 150 or so gems left over, but you're looking at a cost of approximately $25. Um, $25, 25 cards slash play sets at a dollar each. Sounds like a really good deal, right? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Well, the fact is you can also add these cards to your collection through wild card expenditures. Uh, there is nothing saying you have to get the whole set. And for many people, that might be a better option. Let's take a look at why that might be true. But first, let's do a little background in Explorer. About a year ago, Wizards released some data to us about which formats uh, tend to make up constructed play. And Explorer came in dead last with uh, an almost pathetic 7% of all constructed play on uh, the casual or ranked ladders. Um, while there's very little reason to think that that has gone up very much, it probably has gone up a little bit. Uh, of course, Explorer is the newest format on Arena. It also can be uh, a bit of a, well, a hassle for budget players. It, it can be a little hard to get into, uh, but over time that is going to change more and more. Similarly, with the release of uh, a remastered set last year, Wizards declared that Explorer is now approximately 95% in line with Pioneer, with more than two-thirds of the sets having been addressed uh, that had never been released on Arena previously. 
At about that same time, the fine folks at Wizards stated, I think pretty clearly, that their number one goal with regards to Explorer was to bridge the gap to a pioneer environment. And well, now the powers that be have been able to determine that that was a lie. Uh, maybe a well-intentioned lie, uh, we don't really know. Uh, but this set clearly is not a bridge to the current Pioneer environment and is almost certainly not intended to be. It does little to nothing to accomplishing that goal. Uh, although there may be a very good reason for that. So if this set is not a bridge to Pioneer, what does it have to offer for us, particularly as budget players? Of course, we can ask, is it charming? And well, it certainly does give us a uh, full set of charms here, although it's kind of a mix match set with uh, mostly enemy, but a single ally color pair charm, uh, which is a little odd in and of itself. Um, sadly, only two of these five cards really see any play in the current Pioneer environment, that being the Izzet and Golgari charm, and even worse, those only see play in sideboards for most decks, and I don't know if anyone has told Wizards this, but Arena is pretty predominantly a best of one format, so introducing cards specifically for sideboards at best feels a little bad. We could also ask if this anthology is grounded, and it certainly does give us a full cycle of ally color pair rare lands. Uh, but once again, looking at uh, competitive pioneer decks over the last 90 days, only one of these makes an appearance. That is the blue-white uh, Azorius uh, land here. And uh, in that case, its appearances are somewhat haphazard, uh, giving the impression that maybe they're running this land because they didn't own the land they really wanted to be running. Um, so not a lot of value here, particularly for a budget player. And for those that maybe haven't been keeping track, that's 40% of this anthology that we've covered in two cycles and we have little to no value yet. Um, let's take a look at some of the other individual cards and see if that situation improves. All right, so what do we get out of Explorer Anthology 3? Um, for one thing, we get Sylvan Scrying, which uh, is in a few decks. Um, I, I think it's probably in the hundreds, to be honest. Uh, it's one of the most played cards that we're going to be seeing here. And uh, of course, it's an uncommon and uh, first printing on Arena. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, secondly, we do get World Spine Worm, which uh, I found to be in a little over 100 different versions of creativity decks. Uh, so it is out there, but it's, it's not generally ran as a four of. So again, you know, having the copies that you need on wild cards versus buying the entire anthology might be the way to go. Um, we did talk about the, the charms here and uh, their lack of charm. Uh, familiar, Judges Familiar here, again, at Uncommon, I found in a Brace Yourself six decks uh, over the last 90 days. So not a heavily played card. And really, this is the kind of thing that rather than bringing this out in, in a very low impact anthology, they really very easily could have printed this almost anywhere. Um, let's see here. What else have we got? Uh, Voice of Resurgence. Actually sees a fair amount of play at, uh, oh, just under 50 decks that I found. And uh, Xenogox is actually in just under a hundred of those same style creativity decks that we mentioned earlier. Uh, then we've got things uh, like Shield, which sees no play. The only thing I can really say here is uh, it's another zero casting cost for the Bobble decks, but uh, that's, that's about it. We talked about the lands, 
And uh, last up is uh, Thespian Stage. I think uh, almost inarguably the most relevant card uh, in this anthology. It does run three, four copies in pretty much all the Lotus Field decks. And in the last 90 days, uh, I found uh, over 400 different versions of the deck. Again, almost always running three or four copies. But again, this is the singular most relevant card to uh, explore Becoming Pioneer. And even then, you might not need four copies of it, depending upon which version of the deck you end up building. Overall, my best advice for the community is to consider investing individual wild cards for the singles that they are building a deck for. Uh, I think the idea of buying the anthology is really only viable for the whale style completionist that just wants four of everything on arena and can afford to have that prerogative. Uh, or perhaps the person that really wants to be able to brew every single deck in uh, the Explorer format. Beyond that, for the vast majority of us, spending those individual wild cards as you decide to conservatively build decks is going to be a much better option. Now, earlier in the video, I touched on the idea that maybe this not being a bridge to the current Pioneer format wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, the powers that be have definitely made changes to the way bans are being implemented, and we know that there is an upcoming non-standard ban announcement scheduled for August 8th of this year, and there are definite uh, hints coming from Wizards of the Coast that they see some problems in Pioneer, uh, players in particular have been very vocal about the fact that Pioneer is somewhat broken at the moment and very slanted towards combo play almost exclusively. And uh, my idea here is that uh, Wizards is listening and rather than trying to turn Explorer into what Pioneer is, they're trying to turn Explorer into what they want Pioneer to be. Uh, my last video where I went in depth discussing Explorer, I talked about numerous cards that were missing, um, not the least of which is Treasure Hunt. And my guess is the reason it continues to be missing is because it is at least in consideration for being part of the upcoming ban announcement, possibly as soon as August. So the fact that you're not able to play your, your favorite deck on Explorer might be a blessing once these bans are announced. And my guess is they're going to shake up Explorer slash Pioneer pretty hard here. And uh, that's why we're not seeing some of those cards that would be kind of essential to current Pioneer because, well, they might be getting banned. And folks, before you go, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on a thing. Because I know I can't change the magic economy all by myself, but I think we can.